Hello, my girls. Thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, for this class, I am not proposing any title. I am throwing some questions, and I think your answers will lead us to the path directed towards the title. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, suppose X stands for the total number of students in your class. X is the number of students in your class. And we are in need to create a fund for the decoration of your class. Okay. Then, if each of you gives a contribution rupees 7, contribution of rupees 7, then what will be the total contribution? Then the total Answer contribution me. will be rupees 7x. Will be rupees 7x. Okay. Good. Now, just get rid of the unit here. We are considering the expression only. Then, we are considering 7x. Okay. okay sir. In this term, we have two factors. Namely, 7 is the first factor and x is the second. And for the first factor 7, it is fixed. Okay. It does not depend on the class, does not depend on time, etcetera. And x stands for the number of students of your class. If we move to another class, then x will vary naturally. Therefore, for the name of x to be supposed by you? x is not fixed. Not fixed. In mathematics, we will call x as a variable. Therefore, in this term, we have two factors. One is 7, which is constant, and the second is x, which is a variable. And the number of terms here is 1. Okay. Suppose, you are contributing x plus 1 rupees each and you are x in number, remember that, then what will be the total contribution? Then it will be x into x plus 1. x into x plus 1. After simplifying and neglecting the unit, we will get? x square plus x. x square plus x. Here we have two terms, namely, finish my sentence. Here we have two terms. Yes, one is x square and the other one is x. Second is x. Okay. And in this very expression, we have two terms. And the name given to this expression is binomial. Binomial. Okay. Then, can you guess the name of the first one that is 7x? Monomial. Mono stands for one. One. Monomial. Okay. Good guess. Now, I didn't give any contribution to your fund. Now I am ready to contribute the same rupees seven. Okay. Then, proceed. What will be the total contribution? Then it will be x into x plus one, plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. Then, after simplifying, we are getting? x square plus x plus 7. x plus 7. And the number of terms here, total number of terms here is the 3. Number of terms then, we can give the name? Trinomial. Tri. Tri for 3. Trinomial. Trinomial. Now, we are in the position to consider the general structure, general form of a of a complete my sentence where we are considering arbitrary number of terms. So, it can be polynomial. How have you got it? So, like in geometry we have uh, pentagon for 5 sides, hexagon for 6. So, okay. similarly for arbitrary number of terms so we say it uh, polygon. polygon. So, similarly in this expression also if there are arbitrary number of terms then uh, possibly we can call it polynomial. Okay, you have reduced my job. It is polygon. Polygon. So we are considering the general structure of the polygon. Okay. Just look at the screen. General expression for a polygon. Polynomial. Sorry polynomial. You have used polygon, so I am uttering the same word polygon. Yes, sir. We are considering the general expression for polynomial, which is a 0 x to the power n. I have seen in 7 x, 
we have a factor 7 like a constant and another factor is a variable. Here for the first term, I have a 0 for the constant factor and x to the power n for the variable. For the next term, the power will be reduced by 1. So, we are getting x to the power n minus 1 and the coefficient is denoted by a 1 etcetera up to last term is a constant term a n. Therefore, the power index of the power of x is being reduced here term by term. Here a 0, a 1, a 2 etcetera up to a n are all real numbers and the set of real numbers is denoted by capital R look at the picture and the indices of the powers of x are whole numbers. Do you know the set of whole numbers? Yes, the set of whole numbers uh, are running from 0 to infinity. Set of whole numbers is 0, 1, 2 etcetera Up to going towards infinity, but infinity is not being included in the set of whole number. Okay. Endless 0, 1, 2 this sequence is endless just all. Now, please observe a thing for the first term a 0 here 0 is called the suffix of a for the second term 1 is called the suffix of a etcetera. Now, for the first term the sum of the suffix of a which is 0 and the index of the power which is n sum is 0 plus n 0 plus n that is n and for the second term the suffix of a is 1 and the index index of the power is n minus 1 and the sum is n. Please check it for the other terms for the general term that is I mean a r x to the power n minus r what is the suffix for a? The suffix for a is r and a is r and, and the index of power uh, power is uh, n minus r. n minus r. What will be the sum? The sum will be again n. So, I think this is satisfying. Okay. This is the magic of this very expression. This is the general expression for a polynomial, but we have two restrictions. The coefficients must be taken from the set of real numbers and the indices of the powers of x must be taken from the set of whole numbers. That means, we can take 0 or any one of the positive integers. Okay. Now, we proceed to this worksheet, where some expressions are being given and you have to check whether the expression is a polynomial or not. Okay. I have written yes and no. According to your answer, I will strike off any one option. For the first expression, we have 5 x s cube minus 7 x square plus 11. Yes, sir. For the first expression, it is a polynomial. Why? Give a short explanation. Uh, because it has uh, three terms 5 x s cube, uh, 7 x square, and uh, sorry, minus 7 x square and 11 and uh, all the uh, indices of the powers are whole number. Namely 3, 2 and? And uh, 0. 0. Okay. So, this is a polynomial. I am striking out? No. And for the second one? Uh, the second one is not a polynomial, sir. Why? Because uh, for the first case, uh, the indices of the power belongs to the uh, whole number set, but in case of the second term, uh, x to the power uh, half. I have getting. written root x. Root x is nothing but x to the power x half. X to the power then half and half does not belong to the set of uh, whole numbers. So, that is the reason this will not be a polynomial. Okay. No, this is not a polynomial. Yes. Therefore, we should strike out yes option. No will stand. Okay. This is not a polynomial. Next for the third one. For the third one, um, no, it is uh, not a polynomial. Why? Uh, sir, because uh, if we simplify it, then it becomes uh, u plus 1 by u. u square by u will give u and 1 by u will be 1 by u. Then? Yes. Uh, what is for 1 by u? If we write in this manner, u to the power? Minus, minus half. half. Minus 1, I think. Sorry, minus 1. If it was be written as 1 by root u, then yes, it would yes, be u to the power minus, minus half. half. But, but since it is minus 1, so it is not, uh, it does minus not, one belong is not to belong the into the set of whole numbers. Yes, that is why it is not a polynomial. Not a polynomial. Okay. And for the fourth? Uh, for the fourth one, it is a polynomial. 
because uh, the indices of the powers are whole number that is 2 uh, 1 and 0 okay but the coefficient for the first term is an irrational number root 7 yes but don't consider that we will have to check only the index indices of the powers okay, okay. it is a polynomial okay now consider the second one again that was 3x square minus root x minus 7 and you answered correctly that it is not a polynomial. Now, my question is that can you transform this very expression to a polynomial 1? Uh, sir, I am getting confused what to do exactly. Okay, I am giving a hint. Just put root x is equal to y in other words, in other words x is equal to y square then what will be the reduced form of this one? Then root this x equal to y that is x equal to y square. Then for the first term, it if we put y square for x then what would be? Uh, 3 y three y to the power 4. 3 y to the power 4 minus, minus y minus y minus 7. Then check whether it is a polynomial or not. Yes, this is a polynomial. So, you easily transform the second polynomial which was not a polynomial at all expression to a polynomial one okay, okay therefore sir. we can do that but we can't do it always for the third one if we put one by u as x then the first term u will be transformed to one by x yes sir for the third expression we have u plus one by u in order to get one by u to be x if we put 1 by u as x, then the first term will be 1 by x. 1 by x. Then we cannot reduce it by to a polynomial 1. Therefore, we can do it for some expressions, but we can't do it for other expressions also. Therefore, final reduction is 3 y to the power 4 minus y minus 7, which is a polynomial. And this very transformation is known as variable transformation. So, in this class, we have learned just a gist about variable and constant and about the general form of a polynomial, about the restriction on the values of the powers of the variable concerned. Here the constant variable is x, sometimes I have used u, whether a given expression would be a polynomial and reduction of a non polynomial to a polynomial 1 by variable separation. This can't be done always remember that guess the name polygon which is used in geometry and you have guessed rightly in geometry we use the name polygon for arbitrary number of sites and here for arbitrary number of terms in the expression like this we use the name polynomial just like polygon in geometry you have re reduced my job now we are in position to consider the general expression for a polynomial which is a 0 x to the power n plus a 1 x to the power n minus 1 etcetera up to a n. Okay. Thank you sir.